everyone. Now we're going to work on how to shade things without using a pencil. Instead, we're going to be using black permanent markers, which seems like an impossible task because how can you make black ink appear to be like medium grays and light grays? Well, you're going to have to use some techniques that require optical color mixing. And I brought out some examples of some of my favorite comic books so I could show you how in real life these techniques are employed. So one of the things we're going to be doing is called stippling. And in the comic book world, they use a very mechanical form of stippling that you can see on Batman here that's called bende dots. And if you ever look at pop art, um, like Roy Lichtenstein is a really cool pop artist. He uses that technique a lot. So it's all about the placement of the dots um, that really creates those different shades of gray. If the dots are really close together and dense, then they're really dark grays. It, the further apart the, the dots are, the lighter the gray appears because you see more white space behind those black dots. So your eye helps to mix the black and the white. Another technique we're going to be learning about is hatching. And you see this a lot also in comic books where you see these parallel lines and depending on how close together and far apart they are, um, the gray appears, you know, either dark or light. And then the last technique we're going to be talking about is cross hatching. And actually in this image right here, this is from one of my favorite comic books, Injustice, uh, you can see a lot of hatching. So like as we get further away from the rays of this planet, um, or this orb, whatever it is in the sky, the hatching um, gets a little bit denser because it's really bright here and darker down here. You can also see, if I get a little bit closer, some cross hatching that's used in the shading of the person. Um, and so you can actually look in a lot of the characters, you can see hatching and then you can also see the cross hatching. So like I said, this is a common technique that is used in comic books uh, because artists are often using ink and you don't always get a variety of gray to use when you're using ink. So let's go ahead and get started. And just like we did with our last one, we're going to start off with a value scale. And to set this one up, we're going to actually use the centimeter side of our ruler. If you don't have a centimeter side to your ruler, first of all, you can borrow some of the rulers we have in class, um, or you can use like the three quarter inch mark. So if you're looking at the inches, we've got the quarter inch, half inch, quarter inch, inch. We're gonna be measuring things to two centimeters, which is kind of close to like three quarters of an inch. So you can feel free to use that if you wish. But those of you with centimeters, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and mark off lightly, please don't press too hard with your pencil, every two centimeters, and I'm gonna make a grid in the bottom right of my paper here. Um, so let's see here, I'm gonna just put this so that way it's even with an even number here. And I'm going to make a mark every two centimeters. I need a total of seven boxes. Yeah, it's double checking. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes. And I'm also going to make two centimeter marks on the edge of my paper here. Just line it up with the number, mark every two. And this direction, oops, I only need three boxes. So one, two, three. Now if you want really um, even spacing, do the same thing on the opposite side of the paper. And I'm going to go ahead and mark along the top edge of my paper, even though my grid is just going to be back down here, but that'll give me two points I can line my ruler up with so I have nice even squares. Okay, 
Okie dokie. Now, I just realized that you guys are actually using um, drawing paper that's going to give you a little bit of extra space. So you can kind of see here, it'll have a little extra space. That's where I labeled um, cross hatching, hatching, and stippling that we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my ruler up so that way I can connect the opposing lines. And like I said, I'm going to use the dot that I have at the top here just to line my ruler up so I get nice even squares. But I only need to draw in these bottom three boxes here. This is how you get the most accurate measuring when you're making a grid. Otherwise, if I wasn't using that top mark, I might like line my ruler up here, but then I'd be like, ooh, that might make it too wide, too narrow. But this helps me to make sure it's just fine. So when you're using the drawing paper, you should end up with a little bit left over like this. I am using paper that is the size of the copy paper, so I don't have as much room left over. But you should end up with a grid that is three squares tall and seven squares wide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry. I'm really bad at counting. Oh, and I also realize I'm really bad at lining this up. Fix that. Hmm. Okay. Now we're in business. So as we make our value scales down here, and we're practicing stippling, hatching, and cross hatching. We're going to start with um, the black squares on this side and the white squares on this side. So you're actually, and we're going to go ahead and label that so that way you remember not to color in those squares. But this whole side is going to be black. So I would recommend, actually, before we even go on, the first recommendation is to get like a scrap piece of paper to put underneath your work because your Sharpie is going to bleed through the paper. So you might want to get a scrap piece of paper, put it in between your pages before you start with a Sharpie. All right, so on the black squares, I'm just gonna go ahead and outline them and pretty much color them solid black using some good coloring technique. solid black. And this I'm not going to touch. This is going to stay white. So the only values that we're actually filling in are right in the middle. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here. I'm going to use for this exercise my biggest sharpie um, for the first two, sometimes maybe three boxes. And then I'm going to switch to my smaller sharpie for the fourth and fifth box. If you are shading anything with permanent markers, it's totally up to you which marker you're using. Um, but for this demonstration, I just want to point out the fact that um, every time you use the smaller dots that come out of your ultra fine Sharpie, it's going to show more white space in the background. So um, these are good to use when you want to show lighter space. However, these are also just in general really good to use if you're shading in a really small space where you maybe can't fit in um, the, what's it's technically the fine point marker, but the thicker marker, okay? All right, so with my um, fine point Sharpie, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing what's called stippling. And I'm gonna do this in sort of a bend a dot technique where I'm going to use rows of dots that alternate. So I'm going to start by trying to cram in, let's see here, right along the edge of my black box here, 
I don't want to leave a white space. I'm going to go right up to the edge. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I really want to try to get seven dots in there. So I'm trying, I'm trying to get seven. And then in my next row, I'm going to use six dots, but I want to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. I want those dots to go in the spaces of the previous row of dots. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you don't necessarily have to count and it's totally fine if you get your numbers off, but by doing this technique, you'll notice that you have very, very, very little white space showing between the rows. Okay, so now in the next square, I'm going to put even fewer dots. So my last row here had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. I'm gonna go ahead and start with six in this one, leaving just a slightly more amount of white space between the two rows. So then it goes to five and then six again. So you'll notice after that really dark square, it starts to speed up quite a bit. So I'm gonna shade right up onto the line of the next square to help it kind of look like a nice seamless transition. So in this one, I want to use even fewer, more spread apart dots. I'm going to switch to my Ultra Fine Sharpie and you'll notice that by even using the same amount of dots that I had in my last square, it still looks lighter because the dots are smaller. And so now in the one that's right next to white, I'm just going to go three, actually I'm going to go three, four, three. There's still hardly any dots. Looks more like band-aid texture. All right, so there you get a very general idea about how this band-aid dot technique can help to show the difference between your dark darks and your light lights. This acting like your middle gray area. So now we're going to do the exact same thing um, as far as like leaving space as we go along from black to white, but we're going to use a different mark making technique. We're going to use what's called hatching. And with hatching, you get some choices. If you prefer hatching on the diagonal, that's totally fine. If you prefer hatching horizontally, that's fine. If you would rather do this vertically, that's fine too. So you have lots of options. Choose whichever one you prefer. I usually prefer doing something that's more comfortable, um, kind of going ergonomically with how my wrist wants to move. So I will go at a diagonal. So my first diagonal parallel lines are going to be really close together, going edge to edge, filling in that first square as much as possible. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing in the next square, just leaving a little bit more space between the lines. Then I'm going to use even more space. I'm going to try to not have this white space between the boxes too. I want it to look seamless. And then I'm going to switch to my ultra fine Sharpie. I'm going to use even fewer lines once my Sharpie decides to work. And then even fewer. Okay. <laughs> my Sharpie did not want to mark in that area. 
All right, so that is hatching. The next thing we're gonna do is pretty similar to hatching, but it's cross hatching. So you can start in the same way that you did here if you want to um, hatch using diagonals, horizontal, vertical, but your option, uh, depending on what you do, you need to make sure that you are going somewhat perpendicular to whichever way you choose. So basically if you're gonna do diagonal squares or um, horizontal squares. All right. I think I'm gonna stick with my diagonal action here and I'm going to fill this in just like I did with hatching. But now I'm going to go back the reverse way and do cross hatching. Same thing, leave it spread apart, whoops, and cross. Fewer lines, put your sharpie. Oh man, was I off the screen for that? <laughs> well, anyways, there's yours. Hatching, cross hatching, and stippling. All right, now that we have um, our value scales complete, now we're going to put it into practice and we're just going to draw some very generic, round, three dimensional objects. You can draw something that's egg shaped if you want, you can draw something that's more like a sphere, um, but it does not have to look like a perfectly round object. But we are going to pretend that the sunlight or the light that is hitting it is coming from this corner. Okay, so I'm putting a little sun here so I remember the sun's coming from over here. So I'm going to draw three objects um, in this space above my value scales. I'm going to make something kind of ovalish, I guess, like an egg. I'm a little bit more comfortable drawing an oval than I am a perfect circle. So I'll do something like that. Now I'm using a pencil for this first because I want to be able to erase these lines. Now I'm going to give myself some zones that I'm going to color in, or not color in, but shade in using these techniques. So one of these will be for stippling, one of these will be for hatching, and one of them will be for cross hatching. So these zones are going to start in the white area. And the white area will be kind of like where the sunlight is coming from, just towards the edge. And that will be my white zone, just like my white square for my value scales down here. So then I'm going to give myself approximately five more zones until I get to the darkest shadow that will be down here. So I'm going to go ahead, since my light's coming from here, my shadow will be over on this side of my egg shape. So I'm going to put in a little bit of an ellipse on the bottom of all these guys, sticking out from the bottom edge of the eggs. I can do all of these at the same time if I wish. So there's my white spot. And these zones are going to fan out. They're going to be really small and narrow towards the top left. And then they're going to get wider and wider and wider as they come down to the bottom of the egg shape. So narrow and wide, narrow and wide, narrow and wide, narrow and wide. Like so. So these pencil lines are eventually going to get erased, but basically I've created a three dimensional version of what we have done here. So for each of these, I'm going to practice putting the first layer of my value scale towards the bottom edge of my egg shape, the next one in that next zone, all the way until I get to white. Um, and we also want to practice not keeping those things really contained. We want to really practice sort of flowing 
from these darker areas to the lighter areas. And you'll actually find that your ultra fine Sharpie is really helpful um, for blending the differences in those areas together. Um, Cause if you have little white gaps, uh, that's maybe too small to fill in with a fine point mark, it might be the perfect place to put an ultra fine point mark. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do um, a time lapse here, but I will give you a general idea of what I'm starting with. I will have black down here at the bottom of the shadow, but even the shadow will start to kind of dot away as it gets further away from the egg shape. And then I'm going to have really dense dots that get closer to the white, dense hatching, and then dense cross hatching, and that will get closer and closer to the white. All right, time lapse it up. All right, so there you have it. Uh, it's not necessarily perfect, but I hope you at least understand how to um, take what you have learned in your value scales down here and apply them to something a little bit more functional like shading in actual figures.